Okay, so hi everyone. Um, my name is Elena. I am a Army veteran. Uh, I was in for nine years. I worked in behavioral health during that time. So I did all of the mental health goody things, behavioral health stuff. Um, I was deployed to Iraq, uh, had a couple head injuries when I was there, came home, had my first seizure, got diagnosed with epilepsy. Shit went downhill as far as health wise from there, right? I got on a bunch of pills, gained a bunch of weight, was just like sick all the time. Decided I didn't want to be sick anymore. I was just tired of being sick and tired. Um, so I just started walking, uh, started by walking, and then I started kickboxing with a friend of mine. And then I started doing these little like 28 minute workouts on an app. Um, and then I started lifting in the gym um, and like losing all the weight and everything. It was great, um, but my body was still hurting. I was still having a lot of physical pain. I was having shoulder pain from an injury that I'd had in the military. All that kind of stuff was flaring up. My back was still hurting, my low back. Like honestly, my low back was hurting more at that point than it ever had. Um, and I was like, you know what, this isn't, this isn't right. Like I want to go to school. I want to learn. <clears throat> so I did, I went to college to learn all of the things about exercise science and movement and nutrition. And I was blessed to have some of the most amazing teachers at the school. Um, some strength and conditioning coach that I had was, um, well, professor, he was actually a physical therapist. So he explained things in a way and movement in a way on how we can move in our everyday lives better. And that can translate to not just our daily lives, but translate it to the gym, translate it to yoga, translate it to riding your bike, you know, whatever, whatever it is kind of movement that you like to do. How do we help you move better in that movement? all the time, right? How do we feel better all, all day? Well, right now, what I'm doing, sitting here like this, we're all doing it. We're all doing it right now, like right here. Our back is right here, right? Does your back hurt at the end of the day when you sit like this? Like I know who, who does the school thing, right? When we're at school, we do this, we're on a computer. Who works from home right now and is on a computer like this? And we're doing this. Well, we gotta learn how to engage our engage our core, learn how to, you know, use our shoulders, different movements. If you get nothing out of this entire thing today, this, this core engagement part, like always come back to this piece, right? This core engagement. So in a bunch of the different videos that we've had in the course of these mindfulness classes, there's a, a, a theme, breathing, talking about our breathing and using our breath and learning how to breathe into our belly instead of breathing into our rib cage. When we breathe into our chest and our ribs, there's so much movement going on in our body versus when we're learning to breathe into our belly, there's not a lot of movement going on in our upper body and we can engage our core better. It's gonna help our low back for stability. It's gonna help our shoulders literally going to help everything when you start to learn how to breathe through your belly. So one of the best tips that I can give you when we sit down anyways, and you're engaging your core for sitting down, you're going to like, this is sexy as hell for Instagram. This is going to be sexy for your, your lower back, right? So rotate your pelvis this way, pull your shoulders down away from your ears and then back and keep your rib cage tucked down. So most of the time when we try to pull our shoulders down and back, our first thing to do is flare our rib cage. You have to learn to bring your rib cage in. So tuck your rib cage, right? Shoulders down and back. Can you hold this just like this? How, like, it gets kind of hard to do. Even just holding your, your shoulders, down and back, can you keep your rib cage here? Breathe into your belly without having your ribs flare like this and breathing, okay? So this is how we hold our core when we're sitting down. 
understanding the best way for what we can do for anatomical position, right? You want a three points of feet or three points of contact with your feet on the ground. You're gonna have a slight bend in your knees, rotate your pelvis slightly forward, shoulders down and back. How do we brace our stomach? Well, pretend that someone is about to punch you in the stomach. So if someone were literally about to hit you in the belly, what would you do? You would, oh man, someone's about to, so this, right? Bring it here. Shoulders down, back, palms up. Our neck and our chin, we're gonna slightly tuck. The best way I can describe that to you, the way that helps me remember anyways, is pretend that someone you don't like is coming in to give you a kiss. So you're gonna, whoa, whoa your initial reaction is kind of like that. Ooh, turkey neck, okay? So three points of feet, three points of contact on our feet, but a slight little bend in our knees. Rotate your pelvis here. Shoulders gonna be down and back. Keep our ribs tucked. Get that little turkey neck going on. This is anatomical position. If you can learn to hold this, just for brief moments throughout the day or remember to come back to this throughout the day, standing here, walking here, can you keep your core engaged when you move around? Can you hold anatomical position? Like my shoulders get really tired after a while from just holding my shoulders down and back like that, right? They do, they get really sore. <clears throat> but for today, just try and engage your core as much as you can. So let's do it like most people will do this, right? Sexy, mm, Instagram. Dudes, or we stand like this sometimes. We stand like this. We pop the hip out when we're standing. You know, try and stand like this when you're standing in line at the grocery store, when you're standing in front of your, you know what I mean, when you're talking on the phone to someone or whatever. You know, can you keep this neutral pelvis? Can you keep your core braced like someone's about to hit you in the belly? you should still be able to breathe and carry on a conversation and keep your core engaged at the same time. It takes a lot of practice, but eventually you should, should be able to do that, right? So everything that we do today and everything that you do from like now forward, try and remember the small, small things. Rotating your pelvis, pretending someone's about to hit you in the belly to brace, keeping your ribs tucked, chin back, shoulders down and back, right? If you can kind of remember these small things, a lot of your movements throughout your everyday stuff are going to get better. So one of the next movements that we're going to talk about is a squat. Well, why do we do squatting? What do we do squatting for in the gym? Yeah, it's, a, you know what I mean, move a bunch of weight, all that kind of stuff. Well, when do we do that on a regular basis? Well, right, right here. This. This is what we do, a squat. This is why we learn how to squat properly, right? Most people, when we get in and up out of a chair, before we learn how to engage our glutes and our core, we do this and we do this. You put so much tension on our spine and our low back. So instead, start from a seated position. Have your feet about shoulder width apart. Try and have your feet angled out about 45 degrees, just a little bit. You don't need to have your legs super far out in front of you. You don't want to have them super close either. But from right here, try and engage your core. You can stick your hands out if that helps but squeeze your butt cheeks. So squeeze your glutes and then try and stand up with just your legs with keeping your core upright. Perfect. 
Now, as we go down in the lowering phase, try and do the same things, just slower. Keep your core engaged, breathe in, brace. Slowly lower yourself down by keeping, as long as you can keep your more upright core. So squeeze your glutes and step up. Slowly lowering our way down. Squat positions, squatting knees, legs, our ankles, all of that's going to be different for people based on our anatomy. Everyone has different femur lengths. Everyone's got different um, abilities, not abilities, injuries, different things like that. So there is no universal squat stance. If you need to have your legs a little bit further apart to be able to squat down low enough to be able to get down into a chair, do it. If you can have your legs closer together and keep that position without your knees crackling and all that stuff, that's great, do it. Um, there, is no, there is no universal, universal way to squat. Um, there's a few helpful tips um, if you're gonna start squatting with weight and things like that when we add load, but that's for a whole other, other time and place. Um, another thing about squats, our knees are allowed to go, they're allowed to go past our toes. Our knees go past our toes in our daily life all the time. As I'm sitting right here, if you're looking, my knees are past my toes and I'm literally just sitting here. So when I stand up and when I come down, my knees are past my toes and it's fine. Yes. So it's, it's totally fine. However, we don't want to add a ton of low. You don't want to be all the way down here. It's when our heels start coming off of the ground and then we're placing a lot of um, unnecessary pressure on our knee joints. So squatting, literally there's no reason to squat um, ass to grass other than if you're competing in competitions or things like that. Otherwise, regular everyday people for learning how to squat, this is the depth that you need. If you have a chair that goes lower than that or a toilet seat that goes lower than that, that's the depth that you're gonna wanna learn how to squat to. That's gonna be the beneficial depth. And the longer that you do it, the more you practice and the better mobility that you get the easier that it's going to be to squat, and then you're going to be able to get more depth eventually. It just comes with time. Um, next exercise we're going to talk about is a hinge. So why do we why do we hinge? What the hell is a hinge? Well, it's commonly referred to in the fitness world as the at the deadlift the dreaded deadlift, right? But what, what the hell is a deadlift? How do we do this? <clears throat> Should have the chair here. One of the best tips that I can give you for learning how to hinge our hips if we're not sure how to even do that. How do we even start? Well, find a chair that is about knee height, shin height, something you can kind of, you know, you gotta be able to get your feet under there a little bit. But what you wanna do, if you try to squat a deadlift and you try to bend, you know what I mean, do this, you're gonna fall over, right? If you try to squat this, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be able to make it. So what a deadlift is or a hinge is pushing your hips back towards the wall. You're pushing your hips backwards. So your knees and your shins should relatively stay next to the bench or they might come off of it a little bit, a chair, whatever it is that you're using when your hips get pushed back. Because if you try to go down in a squat, you're literally gonna, you'll end up falling over. Um, the other tip I can give is find a wall and you're going to try and just touch the wall with your booty. This is learning how to hinge our hips, hinging at the hips. Instead of trying to do this, 
We don't want to find the wall like this. We want to find the wall like this, right? Here, hinging here. So we'll show you this way again. Try and hinge at the hips like this, right? Why do we do this? Well, we want to pick, we want to pick things up from time to time, right? There's things that end up on the ground that we want to be able to, we want to be able to pick up without breaking our back, right? So we're picking up a backpack that I had from class. I didn't go to class today, but if you're having a hard time figuring out how to deadlift, either put the weight or the object or whatever it is that you're trying to pick up back towards your heels. So that way you have to kind of push your butt back to reach to grab it. Hinging at the hips, our back is staying. So again, we have to brace our core. Someone's about to hit us in the stomach. Someone's about to hit me in the stomach. Boom, get myself a little turkey neck. Shoulders down and back, hinging at the hips. Grabbing the backpack, coming back up. Hinging at the hips, dropping the backpack, coming back up. And it probably seems silly, like, am I actually going to do this? Am I actually, well, I was thinking about it earlier. I was brushing my teeth. I went to go spit in the sink and I noticed myself doing this instead of doing this. We end up hurting your back. If we spend our life flex like this, doing things like this, which is, we do a lot, right? So instead try, try doing this. See if it helps your low back being able to brace your core right here and hinge at your hips instead of always getting too much flexion in our, in our spine. That's, that's a hinge. This is how we hinge. Um, that's how we pick stuff up, right? Next one we're going to talk about is a lunge. Why? Why do we need to learn? Why do we need to learn how to lunge? What does this, what does this look like? Does this look like I'm walking, running? This is a movement we do every day, right? Walking, it's called reciprocal movement. So we need to learn some kind of reciprocal movement. The other reason we do lunges and things, I'm sure if you don't have stairs at your house, there's probably a curb on your sidewalk somewhere that you step onto. That's one leg. I'm sure you don't hop up on the curb like this. <laughs> I'm sure you don't hop up your stairs like this. If you do, great, that's great. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, so we learn reciprocal movement, right? If you have knee pain, if you have a lot of knee pain, which we can totally work on later on, but if you have a lot of knee pain while you're learning how to lunge, a reverse lunge or moving backwards is gonna be easier on your knees because your knees aren't having to take the downward movement, the slowing of a forward lunge. So a reverse lunge, if we're going to do it, this starting point, if you're not sure how to do a lunge, if you're uncomfortable or whatever, hold on to something. But we want to do what's called train tracks. So you wanna have a gap here between your legs, right? You don't wanna be a tight rope. You don't need to have one foot right behind the other. You wanna have space. This is the space that we normally have between our legs when we're walking, running, whatever, right? <clears throat> so create that space. And when you come down in your lunge, you want to make a 90 degree angle with your front leg and a 90 degree angle with your back leg. You can put your knee on the ground if that's more comfortable for you. But when we're doing a lunge, 90 degrees here, 90 degrees on the back leg. A static lunge is literally just 
this here and here, okay? This can be progressed obviously by having weight, using different weight, but a reverse lunge, like I said, when you step your foot back, go down and up, a reverse lunge is going to be easier on our knees. So again, keeping our core tight, rotate your pelvis, ribs are down, shoulders down and back. We have a 90 degree angle right here and a 90 degree angle down here. To stand up, we squeeze our glutes. If you hear a lot of tic tacs, if your knees do the whole like tic tacky thing when you walk up and down stairs, if your ankles do the tic tacky thing when you walk up and down stairs, it literally has to do a lot with our hip placement, where our knees, ankles are at in relation to our feet. So if when you go down into a lunge, you hear a lot of clickety clacking, adjust where your hips are at, rotate your hips this way, put your knee in this way, and make sure our ankles lining up with, we want our knee to track over our toes. So I can hear myself sometimes when I'm not engaging my pelvis or my knees in the right way, I can hear my knees and ankles click click. But if I slow the whole movement down, I can avoid the clickety clacks. Anyways, so if you have bad knees, again, reverse lunges. If you have okay knees and you can do that, a forward lunge is fine. That's literally, you're just coming forward and back. You just wanna maintain that same 90 degree angle, right? When you do your lunge. One's not more beneficial than the other. You're literally gonna get the same out of both things. Um, if you do have knee pain and you can't lunge, but you're trying to get that same effect, or if you're trying to do a little knee hab, like rehab, it seems like a small movement. However, one leg's gonna come out in front of you and you're going to slightly bend your knee until your heel of that other toe touches the ground and then come up. Again, keep your core engaged, rotate your pelvis. Someone's about to hit you in the belly, shoulders down and back, tuck your chin, Slight bend in the knee, hit the ground with that heel and come back up. It's a really small movement, but this is how we can work on our knee pain rehab if you're not able to do a lunge or you don't have the mobility quite yet to do a lunge. These are some of the things we can do for that. How are we doing? Are we engaging our core? Are we engaging our, our belly? Are we breathing through our belly? Or are we breathing through our chest right now? How are our shoulders? Are they down and back, away from our ears? Pull back to that anatomical position for a second. So rotate our pelvis, get that three points of contact with our feet, shoulders down and back. Brace our belly like someone's about to hit us in the stomach. Our ribs are tucked. Shoulders down back, our chin is tucked like this. Just bring it back here for a second. All right, cool. <clears throat> okay, the next move we're gonna do is a push. We have a horizontal push and a vertical push. So the reason that we talked about anatomical position earlier is this is the kind of plane that I want you to remember that the body moves in, right? 
So a horizontal pushing is gonna be anything here, right? Anything here in this, in this area. Even if we're this way, anything here is still a horizontal push because we're still in anatomical position. My shoulders are still moving in this frontal plane here, right? So we were talking earlier about how the military first picks you stuff and they're like, hey, jump in, do push-ups, start doing push-ups. That's what we're gonna do, right? You should already know how to do a push-up. Well, no. <laughs> That was exactly how I ended up dislocating my sh shoulder the first time was because I didn't know how to do a push-up, and I was just doing them wrong all the time and I just kept doing them wrong over and over and over again until I pushed so much strain on my shoulder that eventually dislocated because I had extra weight on my back right. So they're like okay if you don't know how to do a push-up immediately do a push-up starting from your from your knees well that's not where we. That's not where we start a push up from either. Technically, the exact starting place to begin a push up, if you don't know how to do them yet or work in that plane of motion, is going to be against a wall. So I'm going to take you for a small little ride here, but. Sorry, smaller ride against a wall our body needs to stay moving as one whole unit right when we do a push up so remember engage engage our core our shoulders want to stay in it's called the scapular plane the scapular plane is the area here here to here okay here to here when we start winging our arms out like this, our shoulders out like this, how we would, I did push-ups in basic training like this because I don't know, I never learned any differently. We put a lot of impingement on our shoulders. When we move this way and move in the scapular plane right here, it really makes a difference in our shoulder movement. So starting out, you're literally gonna get just a distance from the wall shoulders down and back engage our core like someone's about to hit us in the belly and we come down and then up i know it seems like a small tiny movement just against the wall elena this isn't doing much but i promise you have to learn how to move your shoulders in the right way and use your triceps to help push our bodies off the wall instead of just pushing with our shoulders, right? We wanna use our, our shoulders. So keep your arms tucked into your body, your elbows tucked into your body when you're doing this movement. This is the beginning, beginning, right? When you can do this, the next progression from there would be to find something that's slightly more el like less of an elevation or you know what I mean so chair a bed a couch you know what I mean then after you've done that then you can move to the floor right on our knees still engaging our core down and up, making sure that our body moves <clears throat> as one fluid, one fluid piece, regardless of whether our knees are on the ground or not. But literally our starting position for shoulders for a push movement is gonna be here, horizontal pushing. So when you think about it, <clears throat> when, do we, when do we do this? When do we? When do we push things? Have you ever pushed, had a, pushed open a really heavy door at a, at a clinic, at a restaurant, at a whatever, you know what I mean? We do this movement. Same thing, bench pressing, you're gonna do the same thing. 
right? Translates into a bench press. We don't wanna have our shoulders flared out here when you bench press, puts a lot of impingement right here, right? Your arms are gonna be tucked when you press here. So that's a horizontal press, horizontal press. Vertical pressing is gonna be something that we do above our heads, right? So a vertical press is gonna be here. <clears throat> Another important part for a vertical press is maintaining that scapular plane for the shoulders. You don't, the shoulder impingement and shoulder pain and a lot of shoulder injuries occur when we try and move outside of this plane. So when our shoulders are back here and we're trying to come back here, right here, notice too, if I'm back here, where are my ribs? They're not tucked where they should be, right? It's hard to be here and keep your ribs tucked, which if we're maintaining our proper core, right? Our ribs should be tucked here and you can't get, you can't really get back here. So we need to be here. Moving in the scapular plane. <clears throat> what, when do we do this movement? Do you ever put anything away? Do you ever have anything in a high cupboard that you put, put away? Do you ever go to grab anything, take something down? Like, this is the plane that we move in. Not super often are we back here doing things, you know what I mean? Stay here in this plane of movement when we're doing our vertical, vertical pushing. When we add weight to it, again, just make sure you're staying in this plane, plane of movement. <clears throat> um, so now we're gonna move to a pull, <clears throat> a, a vertical pull since we're on vertical things. It's hard to do a vertical pull without some piece of equipment. That's like the one thing at the gym that you would kind of need to do like a lat pull down or a pull up, right? Doing a pull up on a pull up bar or you don't even have to have that. If you have a tree trunk at home, you can get a towel and hang and pull up. Right? If you have a low hanging something, you can get underneath it and do a pull up, right? Again, scapular plane of movement when we're pushing or pulling in the vertical plane right here. We want to stay in here. <clears throat> Biggest tips I can give you for vertical pushing and pulling to maintain is remember what your ribs are doing. Vertical pushing and pulling is one of the first places that we lose control of where our rib cage is at. Because it's super easy to do when we're reaching to be up here. And if you notice when we reach here, we get a tremendous arch in our low back. And then we put a lot of strain on our spine. So instead, really try when we're working with vertical pushing and pulling, keep our core engaged. So rotate our pelvis, really keep our ribs tucked and moving here. It's a lot harder to do and maintain that core engagement doing this with no weight even. And it takes a lot to think about, you know, what's going on with my, you know, where is my pelvis at? What is my, what are my ribs doing? Is this engaged? Are my shoulders down and back? Is my neck tucked when I'm here, when I'm here? There's a lot going on when you think about the movements that we do every single day. Um, so adding load to that makes it even trickier when we're um, you know, trying to maintain our good form. Um, so a horizontal pull. When do we horizontally pull things? Well, again, a door, your fridge probably, right? After this, you'll maybe go get a snack. I know I will, and I'm gonna go and pull open the fridge, right? Well, instead of doing this and hurting my back or my shoulder when I go to do that, let's try and, let's try and snack more mindfully, right? 
So shoulders down and back is our core engaged. Pull. <clears throat> also, in today's world, everyone needs to be doing more pulling movements all the time because we spend so much time like this on our phone, on our computers, doing whatever hunched over like this when we need to rotate our shoulders down and back, pull. <clears throat> Great tip for pulling movements is to not think about just like ripping stuff or grabbing with your arms or whatever. You wanna think about pulling from your elbow, pulling from your elbow to your hip. And your hand is basically just a hook coming along for the ride. So make your hands into little hooks, like the little Lego hands, right? <clears throat> kind of just coming along for a ride. So shoulders are gonna come down and back. Think about pulling your elbow to your hips and squeeze with your back muscles here. When you think about pulling your elbow to your hip and squeezing with your back muscles, you're not gonna be able to pull your elbow too much further back here. When we start to do this and we're pulling here, we end up putting our shoulder into a compromised position because it rolls forward. So instead, when we're shoulders are down and back and we pull from our elbow to our hip and we pull with our muscles here, you, you'll notice when you're pulling with your muscles right back here, you won't be able to pull too much further past your, your hip with your elbow. Horizontal pulling is also this. This is a horizontal pull. Think anatomical position, right? Yes, gravity is doing something different than here, but this is still a horizontal pull. But just remember what else is involved when you're doing a horizontal pull from this angle, you have to be able to hinge our hips, right? So until you can hip hinge this way, you know, and do your horizontal pulling, stick to pulling like this or seated, seated, right? Rotate our pelvis, shoulders down and back, ribs are down, pulling from our elbow to our hips, pulling from our elbow to our hips. Try and hold this even, just with your shoulders down and back, right? And your elbows pulled at your hips. Do you feel it in your upper back right here? You should feel this in your trap, your upper back right in this area. So that's gonna be <clears throat> horizontal pushing and pulling. We're really working on our back, maintaining our back muscles right here. <clears throat> One of the last exercises that I wanted to talk about is a carry. Who else is team one trip for the groceries? Team one trip all day long. Do not catch me carrying the groceries in more than one trip, right? So this is where carries come in really handy. So the best way to learn how to carry, right? Again, shoulders are gonna be down and back. Try and do one-armed carries unilateral when you're thinking about doing whatever. You don't wanna do, we don't wanna see this because our spine is now in a compromised position, right? We don't wanna see this. So then our spine's in a compromised position in the other way, right? So we've got to engage our core muscles, engage our core, rotate our shoulders down and back, keep our core tight and then move with intention, moving with intention. This is one of those exercises that it <clears throat> can be extremely humbling and we may need to lower the weight quite a bit in order to make sure that we're not having that lopsided one side or the other. Um, if you're a student, if you are a 
um, a bag person. Like I'm a, I'm a bag lady. I have tons of bags and things like that that I carry around or when I was going to school. We usually always tend to carry our bag on, on one side. For me, I always carried it on my right side. Um, try carrying things on your other side, your non-dominant side. One, it's gonna force us to really think about what we're doing. And two, I guarantee that side needs more work and more attention than the side that you're normally carrying stuff in all the time. So really we're trying to just equal up, you know what I mean, our weight distribution, but learning how to carry. So we can carry in all of our groceries and all of our bags in one single trip without destroying our shoulders or breaking our back or, um, you know what I mean? <clears throat> We're trying to learn how to move, like we said, being more intentionally in our daily life. <clears throat> so taking these base base movements. These are literally the base movements. You could build the most amazing workout plan on the planet just doing these base movements because these are things that we do every single day, all day long. We stand up and sit down in chairs all day long. We pick things up off the ground. We open and close things. We put things away. We take things down. Um, we push, you know what I mean? There's literally everything that we do all day is right here. So learning to move more intentionally in all of those movements will help translate just to our, our daily lives. But think about other things that you do during the day. What's something specific to your job or your daily life that you could do more intentionally? So if you stack shelves, at a shop, you know what I mean? If you stack shelves at a grocery store and you spend a lot of your day doing this, you know what I mean? Picking things up and sticking them on a shelf, that should probably be part of your exercise regimen is more of this, more of this, this, you know what I mean? Just learning different movements that affect your everyday life and how to make those better. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to our core engagement. If you literally got nothing else from this entire thing, I hope that at some point during the day, to today, tomorrow, whatever, you're like, oh, oh, I'm sitting here. Let me rotate my pelvis. Let me do, do you know what I mean? Oh, I'm standing at my kitchen sink. Let me rotate my shoulder. Oh, I'm texting this person. Let me lift my, rotate my shoulders back just a little bit. Um, Small, small things. Oh, I need to learn how do I, oh, how do I brace my belly? Oh, pretend someone's about to hit me, hit me in the stomach, right? Small little corrections, small things that we can do that will literally make a huge impact in your everyday life if we start to incorporate them and do them on a regular basis. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, if anyone has any questions or if there is Anything I can do, please feel free to reach out. Um, please send me a video of you doing a movement. If you're not sure how to do a movement or if it feels funky, ask. Um, literally any questions, please send clothed videos if you're gonna send a video. Um, <laughs> but yeah, literally just, just ask. I would love to help you figure out how to move better in your, in your everyday life. So I appreciate you guys listening and putting up with my shenanigans here. And just thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you. Thank you so much.